and welcome to Marinsky March 2023, where every day in March we make a sausage recipe out of one of Adam and Stanley Marinsky's books. Last year we did home production of quality meats and sausage, which I think is one of the best sausage books out there. Stella gives you the how and why behind what you're doing in sausage making. But this year we're doing recipes out of the new book, 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes which is a gift to us sausage makers and meat enthusiasts. Adam and Stan have traveled across Europe and North America for the last 20 years compiling recipes and they put it all into this jumbo book. What's even better is Stanley has sent me five copies to give away to you guys over the course of the month and all you got to do to get qualified is leave a comment in the videos and I'll find you and I'll send you a copy if you're one of the lucky winners. So, without any further ado, let's get into 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes by Adam and Stanley Marinsky. Hello, thanks for clicking on. Here we are making another fermented sausage product from Marinsky March 1001. That's right, you heard it right. 1001 Greatest Sausage Recipes by Stanley Marinsky. Right out of the book. The book is linked below and we are making the lap chong. I'm pretty excited to make this one. I have seen other guys make lap chong. I watched on Eric's uh, channel, Two Guys in a Cooler. Um, and it's probably the most famous um, fermented sausage that comes out of Asia. China? Chinese. Well, let's find out a little bit more about lap chong. Right out of the book, page 367, if you're following along at home. Lap chong is, lap chong is a dried hard sausage usually made from pork meat of high fat content. I like where it's going already. The Chinese name for sausage is lap chong, which means the winter stuffed intestine or waxed intestine because chong not only means intestine, but also means sausage. This sausage is normally smoked, sweetened, and seasoned. It is used as an ingredient in many dishes in some parts of southern China, including Hong Kong and countries of Southeast Asia. And now it's trickling over into North America. That's not in the book. That's ad-libbed by me. Uh, it is, for example, used in fried rice. Yeah, that's maybe when we do the taste test. Noodles Ooh. and other dishes. Chinese sausage formulations are unique based on a long tradition. Ingredients such as monosodium glutamate, aka MSG, soy sauce, and sugar are added to the sausages in very high levels. That's right. A Asians are famous for their high MSG. <laughs> The addition of selected Chinese rice wines or even scotch or sherry are common for certain quality products. So we're going to make it up. We're going to make it up out of pork butts. That's what the recipe calls for. So I have half a pork butt that I've been chewing away on for making these fermented products. We've been making them all day today, getting them all started today for Marinsky March. So I got stuff to look forward to. Yeah, weigh us out one kilogram. AKA 2.2 pounds, boneless pork butt. You guys think I get one kg on the first cut? What kind of skill level is this guy, huh? Can you get a kg? Nah, that's more than a kg. That's more than a kg. Oh, 1,156. I want fatty pork though. I'm gonna cut off some of this lean stuff here. Okay, 1,003 is close enough. Running through a 3 8 plate. So we'll just knock her down into some slices. Normally you kind of want to stick these in the freezer so they go through real good, but a 3 8 plate is pretty big, so the grinder should be able to handle it. No problemo. Let the grinding begin. There we go. 3 8 plate, nice and easy. Well, I should have mentioned too, uh, I took the gland out of that pork shoulder earlier when I was doing other sausages. You kind of want to have glands out of the sausage when you're making fermented products. There's our ground pork. Nice and easy and quick. Oh, and I'll go grab our culture, which I just put in a little water, dechlorinated water. I'm on the well here. I don't got to worry about chlorine. Uh, about a half hour before we started. Oh, and if you're following along in the recipe, 
you'll see that MSG is in the recipe, but there's no MSG in my meat chop, so I left it out of the recipe. Uh, all right, so we just mix it all together now, stuff into 18 to 26 millimeter casings. I'm gonna do hog casings, 29 32s, because that's what I got ready. And then we're gonna ferment it. Overnight, 12 hours, all right, here we go. A lot of sugar, a lot of sugar. Oh, and we gotta get the rice wine. I bought rice wine for the first time in my life, just for this recipe. I don't know how it's gonna be. I don't know good sake from bad sake. So, I bought three symbols that I don't know what they mean. I don't know, better try some. Remember my fancy wine tasting equipment from the other episode? Or maybe this episode came first, who knows? Very clear. Ugh. Uh, I don't know if I'd buy that again for pleasure. Whatever. It's not bad, I guess. It's not that good, though. All right. What do we need? 25 milliliters of the rice wine. Oh, shut off. Okay, there's our rice wine. I'll put this on the shelf to sit forever. All right, drizzle our wine over the pork and sugar and spices. Add our bacteria culture in. And mix that around our lap chong. Yeah, so this one's like a, it's a weird, it's a hybrid. It's a, it's a fermented product, but it's also fully cooked. So we're gonna stuff it into casings, ferment it um, like at quite a warm temperature, 38 degrees. Uh, Celsius, so 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 12 hours, and then we're going to light smoke it for 6 hours, and then hot smoke it until it's 68 Celsius inside, so 155. And then it's kind of shelf stable, it says. I think it's good. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned yet in this episode, but if you leave a comment in the comment section below, that is an entry into winning the sausage stuffer. I'm gonna give it away at the end of March. On to the horn we go. All right, let's get this lap chong started. Oh, air pocket. Let the air out, pressing your thumb against, thumbnail against the horn. All right, so we're just gonna do five to six inch lengths, kind of standard size sausages. Oop, I stuffed her kind of tight. Uh-oh, just gotta massage it when you just over stuff her. Massage it a bit, and then you can get away with the Lincoln. There's our happy little lap chong links. Now I'm gonna grab a weight on them and saran wrap the heck out of them and put them in the warmest spot in my meat shop, probably right in front of the cooler compressor because they gotta be 38 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 hours. All right, there's a lap chong. It's been fermenting at a pretty warm temperature. It was in front of the compressor all night, 12 hours, and it's got quite the unique smell. It smells really aromatic, really good. So we're gonna load it up onto the smoke sticks and stick it in the cold smoker. All right, we got them loaded in the smokehouse. It's minus 12 today here in Canada. You know it's cold when the sausages are just steaming from coming in from, coming out from inside. I'm gonna load the, the chips in. We're gonna use some Probably, I'm assuming this is traditional Chinese wood selection, is Jack Daniels oak barrel wood chips for cold smoking. But I got the little chief fired up. It's gonna be perfect temperature to smoke these guys today. I can't hold this and put it at the same time. It's gonna smoke for about three hours and I'll come reload it again and smoke her some more. <laughs> Voila, there we go. Excited for lap on? Smoke's rolling out of the cold smoker now, and I thought I'd better tell you guys, I'm not smoking it at minus 12. That little guy in there heats up, that little element heats the smoker up. It's about eight degrees in there, so works perfect. All right, here we are, the last step for the lap chong. It just come out of the cold smoker. I'm gonna sneak in with a batch of venison sausages here, left over to do in January. See those tags? That's each individual order for each individual wild game customer. Isn't that cool? All right, time to hot smoke these bad boys. All right, lap chong alarm just went off. 
Ooh, look at them guys. Look at all of them. Look good. There's Lap Chong. Looks pretty yummy. Nice smoke color. I was thinking after I pulled it out of the cold smoker, I regret using those Jack Daniels chips because um, I used hickory in here. It'll be a bit of a mixed smoke flavor and I probably won't be able to replicate it if I really like them. But anyways, I'm gonna give these a little ice water bath, cool them down and taste them tomorrow morning. Okay, here we are. It is finally test time for these Lap Chong. I'm pretty excited. I'll show you how the color looks after the night in the fridge. I am quite happy with them. They got lots of smoke color for a straight pork sausage. Look pretty yummy. Nice firm texture. So let's dive into them. Lap Chong, the fermented, cold smoked, hot smoked, fully cooked product. Let's get a little cross section here. There's the inside of our Lap Chong. Nice speckles of yummy looking fat. Here we go. It smells quite aromatic. It's got that cinnamon and socky smell to it. Let's see how she is. That's a really neat tasting sausage. It's got some tang from the fermentation. Definitely got a pH drop on that. I wish I had a pH meter to test it, but really tangy. And the sake and aromatic spices come through. That's so good. It's different. It tastes like nothing I've ever had. And they say, I was reading, how are you supposed to cook lap chong? You take them and you split them like I split this guy and you put them in the rice cooker with some rice. So I might do some of that. And then the juices from the sausage cook out over the rice and you have like a yummy mixture. You cut a little green onions on it, but mm, quite good. Very unique. Like nothing I've ever had. Tangy, savory, aromatic. Very cool. I'm gonna cook it on some rice. Okay, here we go. A little lap chong into the rice water. Split. Was it gonna fit? Oh, they'll fit. This is how the recipe said to cook them online. See how it tastes. Okay, it just went tick. <sighs> Smells good. Okay, this is my breakfast here. And I thought it would be suiting to get some nice china for eating a sausage from China. So we have the Royal China paper plate. It's pretty yummy. The juices are supposed to have cooked out onto the rice. I don't have any utensils, so that's why I'm eating it with a set of tongs. It says you're supposed to cut it into skinny little strips after it's been cooked. I'm gonna eat it from a set of tongs. Yeah, that's yummy. That's exactly how I'd cook that. Mmm. Bap Chong gets two thumbs way up from this guy. Yummy. Even better warmed up, I think, with the rice. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll make a sausage every day this month, Marinsky March, all March long.